Hi, class. So we're starting um, with Chapter 4, which is on regression analysis. So here, um, what, what we're going to do in this chapter is we're going to explore how we can um, determine if there are some associations between two quantitative variables. Yep. <clears throat> so here are some Chapter 4 topics. So we want to explore associations between numerical variables, graphically and numerically, and then also be able to model linear trends using a, a regression line. So regression is a very big topic, um, so you're going to be introduced to some basic regression topics in this chapter. Right. So section 4.1 is visualizing variability with a scatter plot. So some key things that we want to be able to do um, is be able to use technology to create a scatter plot and also be able to use scatter plots to investigate associations between numerical variables. Right. So here, um, this is visualizing variability with a scatter plot. So some key points are the primary tool for examining relationships between two numerical variables, right? That's what we use a scatter plot for. So it gives us a nice visual of what's going on between two numerical values. And then also just remember that every point in the scatter plot is one observation, right? So it has one X and one Y value. And then um, typically we don't draw these by hand. Typically we have so much data that it doesn't really make sense to draw by hand. So we can use technology such as a computer software or graphing calculator. So we can use like the TI-84, or you can use R, or you could even uh, do a scatter plot in Excel um, to, to be able to work with this data. So here's an um, example of a scatter plot, right? So the title of the graph is the median age of marriage for women. So along um, Along the bottom, we have the median age of marriage for women, and along the side, the median age of marriage for men. Right? So each point in the scatter plot represents one state in the U.S., right? So they're um, in the District of Columbia, right? So every point represents one dot. So like Ohio would have a dot, Indiana would have a dot, and Florida would have a dot, and so forth. Right. So then um, this, this is the form that the, the order pair that our data is in, uh, median age of women, right? that's the X, and then comma, median age for men, that's the Y. Right? So you're just plotting those points. Right. So these are three important things to keep in mind when you're examining scatter plots. So like if I ask, if I give you a scatter plot and ask you to describe it, these are three things that that you should be talking about, right? And I'm also going to emphasize that you should put it in perspective, right? So we'll walk through some examples um, of this. So first, let's talk about um, trend, right? So the three features are trend, strength, and shape. So trend um, is like center, strength is is like spread, and then we also have shape. So when we look for trend, um, we're looking for um, the general tendency as we le read from left to right, just like you're reading a book, right? So if we see our data going increasing, right? So like if we were to draw like a line of best fit and it looks to have, um, has a positive slope, then we would call it a positive association, right? And then if my line is going downhill, we call that a negative association. So again, if I were to draw a, a line of best fit on, on my graph, um, and it looks to be going downhill, um, then that's negative or negative slope, right? Then lastly, um, we can also have no trend, right? It's possible that um, we don't have positive or negative um, a trend going on in our scatter plot. So here's an example of positive trend. So you can see that as the age of car increases that the miles driven tends to increase. Right, so o overall the the trend is positive, although there are some some outliers. Right, so like here, this this point um, seems to be an outlier. Right, and also this point. So um, n not all of the points are going to fit um, fit our data, but we're looking for the majority of the points. <clears throat> right. 
So you can read here at the bottom, right? It says this scatter plot shows a positive trend because the graph goes uphill as you scan from left to right. This means as the age of the car increases, the mileage also tends to increase, right? Then here's an example of a negative trend, right? So as I go left to right, notice as my literacy rate increases, my total bursts per women tend to go down, right? So it has has a negative um, association. And then here's an example with no trend. So there's, you know, everything just is scattered at random. There seems to be no pattern. So, um, see, so we can read here. It says um, this scatter plot shows no trend because the point seems to follow no predictable pattern. Right? As I was pointing out, um, this means that for every age group, we can can find relatively fast and relatively slow runners. Right? Marathon running speed does not seem to be related to age of the runner. Right? So that that seems to make sense. Right? Our, if our data was <laughs> showing um, age of runners and how fast they are, right? Certainly, um, that's not going to necessarily follow a trend. And then here's another example. So, so we saw where we could have positive trend or negative trend or no trend, um, but just something to point out that it is possible to have a trend, but it's not linear, which means it's not positive or negative, right? Positive and negative only go for linear trends. So you can see here in this graph, this certainly has a trend, but it's nonlinear, right? It has has a curve to it, right? Um, so, so at the bottom, right, it says the data set shows an association between two variables, but it cannot be characterized as positive or negative, right? So, so here, what you'd want to say um, is just a nonlinear trend, right? We could just simply say there's a nonlinear trend. So here um, it's talking about strengths of an association, right? So that was one of the next points to talk about when we're describing a scatter plot. So um, we're told here that scatter plots with large amounts of scatter or vertical variation indica indicate a weak association, where scatter plots with small amounts of, sc of scatter or like vertical variation indicate a strong um, association. All right, so let's explore some of that. So here's um, an example. Um, so we're asked, is there a stronger association between height and weight or between waist size and weight? Right. So you can see here, um, here we have height and weight and my, my points are more scattered, right, vertically. Right. So if I were to draw like a line in the middle here to try to model the data, we have more points that would be further away from the line, right? So more, more away from the center here. Where in this graph, if I were to draw a line right here, right, um, there there would be less variation, right? So actually, let me Let's see. We are on this slide. Let me um, show show you what I'm talking about with the with the line, right? So let me grab a screenshot of this. All right, so when I'm talking about a line of best fit, we're trying to um, draw a line that, that appears to model the data the best that we can. All right. So with the one on the left, um, Right, so the one on the left here, let me grab a red line. Um, you might try to draw draw a line that looks some something to be about here, right? Just a line that fits most of the data, right? When you draw a line of best fit, and we're gonna look more and more at this, so this is also called a regression line. Right. What we want to do is minimize the distance from 
from the line with each point, right? So like, for example, um, this point is gonna have, oops, this point on my graph is gonna have an X value, right? So down here, uh, maybe it's, I don't know, 66, right? Then if we follow up and we want to look at any point that has x value of 66, right? So for example, this point looks to have the same x value. This is going to have a distance in between the value on the line and this point, right? So we would do this for every point, and we're gonna we're gonna look at this um, in greater detail. I'm just trying to give you an overall um, overall idea here. So um, this value on the line, this is what we call predict a predicted value. And this is called an observed value. Right, so what we're going to do is try to look at the distance in between um, in between the the every data point in the line, and we try we want to minimize that um, overall. Right, so that's what we're going to be trying to do. So so this so this line is just trying to model the data. Right, try to fit most of the data. Doesn't have to fit every point, or actually, it doesn't have to go through any points. Um, but it should should go towards the center and try to model all the points, right? So like this this line would be um, <clears throat> would be would, could be a, a possible regression line for this data set, right? And again, notice here that on the left this has a weaker um, a weaker association because there are points that are further away from the line than over here, right? So for the most part, all my points are really close to the line. Right. right, so we could say that there seems to be a stronger association between waist size and weight, right? So again, there's less vertical variation in the graph, right? So I try to point that out for you. So the next thing we want to talk about is shape, right? So um, if we have something that's linear, like here, um, then then that describes the shape, right? We just say it's linear. The the points seem to be following this linear pattern, right? Um, so this scatter plot is showing a linear uh, association between volume of searches for the word vampire and the word zombie, right? So there seems to be a pattern um, with this, right? A linear pattern. Uh, it would be a positive, right? Um, and this seems to be um, fairly strong, right? And also in the coming sections, we're going to learn how to measure the strength of the trend, right? So here's another possible shape that's nonlinear, right? So we can have a linear shape or a nonlinear shape. And using linear or nonlinear is perfectly fine for me at, at, at this level in this class, right? Um, so it says sometimes there are trends in data that are nonlinear, trends that are better modeled by a curve rather than a line, right? So this scatter plot shows that this there is a nonlinear trend between temperature and pollutant ozone levels, right? So we don't have a doesn't seem to be a linear trend. This um, this curve trend seems to fit the data better. And sometimes the type of trend that we have isn't so obvious. Um, it, it it becomes more obvious the more data points we have, right? So you always want to keep that in mind too. Like if we have five data points, it's really hard to see, to, you know, tell is this a linear trend? Is it nonlinear? You know, is there any strength here? Um, you really don't have enough data to really make any hard conclusions from, right? So you want to have lots and lots of data points, as many as possible, um, is always best. Right. So then, now I want to just talk a little bit about is well, we we looked at the three things to look for, but now how do we write descriptions of associations? Right. So again, when we write descriptions of associations, we still want we want to talk about the trend, the shape, and the strength. Right. So talk about the things that we we looked at before. Also, um, we want to talk about if there are any like outliers, any data points that don't seem to fit the trend. Right. <laughs> So here's an example. So we're given um, this data point. So we have the median age for marriage of women and the median age of marriage for men, right? That that we had saw before earlier on. Um, so it says, how would you describe the association between um, between median age of marriage for women and median age of marriage um, for men? 
in the 50 states and the District of Columbia. All right. So this is um, a possible way to describe, right? We could say the association between median age of marriage for women and the median age of marriage for men is positive and linear, right? So, um, so, so here we do have a positive trend and it is linear. Um, so in other words, the women who marry at an older age tend to marry men who are an older age, right? So what this is saying is just noticing that as my X increases, my Y also increases, right? So older women tend to marry older men, right? Which makes sense, right? And it says the association is strong because there is very little vertical variation in the graph, right? So this is like an amazing description. Notice um, the key, one, one of the key things is putting it in context, right? You don't want to be so general, like where you could just apply this to any linear trend graph, right? It's being very specific, using the variables and interpreting what it means to be positive, right? So like this, in other words, sentence, that, that's talking about what it means to have a positive linear trend, right? So you want to pay attention to that. <clears throat> right, and these are just some considerations um, to, to take into account when you're describing associations. So the first thing is we always want to use a phrase like tends to when describing an association, and that's because the trend you're describing has variability. Um, the association you're describing may not be true for all individuals, right? So we can't we can't say that um, you know this always happens. We have we say this tends to happen, right? So overall, this this um, positive linear trend tends to happen, but it's not a hundred percent that that it's always going to follow this pattern, right? There'll be very few times that that we'll get a perfectly linear um, trend, right? And again, we're going to talk about how to measure um, how strong that trend is. And then also, we always want to point out if we have any data points that are very unusual or not part of the general pattern, right? Those can be very interesting points um, to consider, right? And we we should we shouldn't just ignore the, ignore those. All right. <clears throat> all right, so that's all I have for, for this section for now. Um, so in the coming sections, I will show you how to create a scatter plot um, in R and also in the graphing calculator and probably in Excel also. All right, so this is just a short chapter just to introduce us to the idea of regression.